Morning everybody, Luke Fitzpatrick here. Thank you once again for watching. Well, we've got a huge week lined up. We're actually heading over to Gary Fraser Island. Uh, my father and law are heading over for a boys only trip. We're gonna be over there all week from Monday through to Friday, and we're gonna be doing a lot of beach fishing while we're over there. Uh, my father-in-law hasn't been over there in about 30 years, so big trip for him. I thought what I'd do is uh, we spent yesterday packing the car, and I thought I'd run you through the gear that we're actually gonna be taking over and using, just to give anybody out there a bit of help and a few tips if you are planning a similar beach fishing trip to Fraser Island. We're not going over there to chase monsters. You'll see lots of footage on social media uh, of people using drones to fly baits out, doing slide fishing, all that sort of stuff, um, chasing massive GTs and mackerel at the top of the island. We're very much going over there to do a bit of bread and butter fishing. We're gonna be doing uh, targeting whiting, dart, and then tailor is the prize that we're really chasing. So that's how we've geared ourselves up to head over. And here's a few tips if you're planning a similar trip yourself. So having a target species in mind is really important, uh, especially if you're just starting out with fishing or you haven't really done it before. And if you're going to Fraser Island for the first time, it really allows you to refine what gear you're gonna take. Um, I'm gonna run you through three outfits that we're taking. I reckon you only really need two if you're going with the bare minimum for your trip. Uh, a lighter outfit for chasing whiting and dart, you can do that on the same outfit basically. And then the tailor, you wanna have a slightly larger outfit. Some people could argue that you could just take one setup and you'd be right for all three species. Um, but I'll run you through uh, just weights, line, uh, rigs, all that sort of stuff. It is very daunting when you go into a local tackle store nowadays, there is thousands of options when it comes to rods and reels and lures and hooks and things. So hopefully this will help you refine your choice a little bit okay so these are three outfits i reckon these two here are probably the bare minimum that i'd take over uh, the first one which i'm going to use mostly for whiting and dart it's an 8 to 15 pound nine foot fast action rod uh, with quite a long butt section for casting you got to remember you're going to be casting into surf um, and to help you with that you need a, a good base for casting and a nice long rod to be able to penetrate into those waves. I've got that matched up with a 2500 uh, Stratic. Uh, it's got 10 pound braid on it. I'll put a eight, eight pound leader on it and this one will be able to deal with uh, whiting and dart very, very effectively. And then going for the larger, this is what I'll be using for chasing the tailor. Uh, it's a 14 through to 35 pound, which is Maybe a little heavy for a few people, but um, you got to remember you're fishing in the surf, so there's a lot more resistance in the water um, compared to if you're just fishing in an estuary. I've got it uh, matched up with a 5000 Saragossa. Um, I've actually got 30 pound braid on that. This is my jigging reel um, that I've just repurposed onto this reel for this trip. Um, so this this outfit is nine foot as well. And it also has a really long uh, butt section for casting so that you can get both hands on that and you can really get that out into the surf really easily. The other option, um, which is one I haven't used before, so I'm gonna be testing it on this trip, is a travel rod. So this is uh, from Samurai. It's a 20 to 35 pound uh, travel rod. So it's not too dissimilar to uh, this one here that I've got set up for chasing Taylor and it actually comes in four pieces um, it's got the butt section uh, then it goes to the base section and then it's actually got the a medium taper tip and then it's also got a fast action tip in there so it comes with two tips so it's actually um, so it's actually really well packed um, it comes with its own tube and then they're all hiding in there and then you can uh, just assemble it uh, quite easily, really easy to put it together, but um, very handy for people who might be traveling on planes and things like that, uh, even staying in the back of your four wheel drive. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how that one goes. And that will be 
that'll be basically doing the same job as the larger rod that I've got set up. Rightio, so we're going to be doing both bait fishing and we'll be using lures as well. All right. Um, for the tailor, I'm going to start off casting larger metal uh, slugs um, around the 30 gram sort of size. And I've bought a, a selection of slightly smaller ones in case they're not going for the bigger ones. But the idea of these is you uh, cast them right out into the surface as far as you can or into your target area and basically reel them back in at a fairly steady quick pace. They shine and catch the light. You can see that as it's doing there under the light. And the tailor come in and have a crack at them. You'll also get quite a lot of dart using these as well. I'm also taking over some jigs. Uh, I've seen a few videos of people doing surf jigging. So I've got some 10 and 15 gram jigs that I'm going to cast out. I'll probably use these on the lighter outfit, the whiting and data outfit, and bring them back with an erratic action and see if we can get some dart and things. Now, a lot of people who are not confident with using lures will be using bait, and we'll probably actually be using bait quite a lot. Um, we're going to be using gang hooks. Uh, size 3, I find, works really well over on Fraser. I've also got some 2Os, so 3Os, 2Os, and I've even gone down to a size 2 if they're being a little bit finicky. And I like these ones that come... You get a lot of a lot of brands that will come pre-rigged, okay? So they'll all already, already be linked together. But I like these because depending on the size of your pilchards and things that you can use for bait, you can either run with just two, or you can go to three, or you can even go to four if you need to. So, um, and all you need is a little... Once you thread them through, you just need a pair of pliers to crimp them, and they're solid as. So that's for the sort of larger baits that we'll be using. And they'll be matched with a 10 or an 8 ball or maybe even a 6 ball sinker, running ball sinker on the rig. But I'll show you those during the week while we're over on Fraser. Other options we've got, I'm going to take some bait holder hooks. Um, I've got some 1Os here um, just in case, you know, we might put a um, pippy on there or something like that. And then for whiting, we come down into the smaller hooks. I've got... Long shanks, uh, size 6, really, really effective. I've also got uh, worm hooks in 4s and 6s. And those sort of sizes work really well. Match them up with smaller uh, ball sinkers, uh, even the little barrels if you want. And I put a little bit of red tubing and a, and a red bead just above the hook. I'll, I'll show you those when we're over on the island. So there you go, that's what we're going to be doing. Um, bait wise, we'll use beach worms a lot for whiting and dart, and pre pilchards for the tailor. Um, and we'll just see how that goes to sort of start. So that's probably your stock standard, uh, what you really want to sort of start with. Um, I'll probably cast metal slugs first to see if the tailor are around, um, use beach worms for the whiting and dart. That'll be my base, and then I'll just build up from that during the week as we sort of refine what we're doing, um, and hopefully zero in so we can find some nice fish. Our goal very much during the week is fish early morning. Throughout the day, we'll sort of do a little bit of fishing, and then evening, we'll do, um, we'll do a bit more fishing as well. We really just want to secure a feed for the day, so whether it's whiting, dart, or a tailor, um, Taylor being the prize, but we don't mind if it's just whiting or dart. And closer to the end of the week, if we can get a couple of extra fish to freeze up and bring home with us, that'd be really good as well. So that's the objective of the week, um, as well as taking over Shane, who hasn't been there in so long. I reckon he's going to be blown away with the infrastructure over there. It'll bring back lots of memories being in that beautiful space that is Gary Fraser Island. And it should be a really awesome week. So we'll be posting lots of content throughout the week. So if you can follow along and uh, check in on us, that'd be really good. And we'll try and offer as many tips as we go. So that's what we're up to this week. All the best. Um, stay safe. And we hope to see you out in the water one day. 
Thanks for watching.